And welcome back, Haskey here with another guide for Banjo-Kazooie. Today we're going to be collecting Jiggies on Rusty Bucket Bay. I think this level has some of the hardest Jiggies to collect in Banjo-Kazooie. This stage, of course, has the infamous engine room in it, which of course is a, an area of the game that killed me many, many times over the years. We'll be visiting that, of course, uh, much later on in the video. First off, we'll be coming down here and grabbing the pink Jinjo. He's having a, a real bad time down here underwater in this weird cage thing. Rusty Bucket Bay, of course, has the oily water, which prevents you from regaining your air when you swim on the surface of the water. So in order to avoid drowning, you need to find a ladder or something to stand on. Only by completely leaving the water do you regain your air. So it's quite dangerous. And of course, when you go underwater, you also use double the air. So you don't want to be underwater if you can help it. Anyway, coming over here, we're going to be paying the toll for this this bridge. Luckily, this, this toll bridge requires eggs as far as currency goes. That's good. We regurgitate eggs a lot in this game, so we'll be able to cover that. Coming over here to this warehouse, there's this window that looks a little bit different. It's like a transparent window as opposed to the yellow ones. You can use the ground pound ability, and I was trying to show off. You can see the uh, just barely the tip of that that jiggy there. But that'll be jiggy number one on Rusty Bucket Bay. You won't be able to reach the window you drop down through, so you'll have to go all the way back down to the bottom, the, the, the lowest level where the water is, and come out through this big old dang door. There goes Gruntilda telling us that we'll use twice as much air while we're underwater. Visiting this little shark cage thing here, we're going to be seeing Snacker again. It's been a while since we've seen him. Luckily, he's only uh, here inside this cage and not everywhere in Rusty Bucket Bay. That would be <laughs> pretty unfair. Anyway, showing off a cool little trick here. You can use gold feathers to disable Snacker. Yes, you can do that. Pretty cool. I love showing people that because it seems like a lot of people don't actually know it. But yeah, I was mentioning Gruntilda talking about the double air. It just kind of reminded me, it was like, I think it was the music note guide that I did. Um, I was right around this this spot in my music note run, and I was revealing the big secret that you use double air underwater. I was explaining it like it was some obscure secret, as if it had never been mentioned anywhere. But uh, yeah, the game definitely just tells you, so I don't know what I was thinking. Anyway, though, we're going to flip this switch and raise this anchor. And uh, we'll watch this anchor just get dragged across this dolphin. <laughs> Every time I see that, I'm like, that guy's dead. He's cut in half. But somehow he's fine. He's just going to swim away. That's good. Because we needed that jiggy. I'm going to come over here and collect all this health. I don't even remember what I took so much damage from. But it's fine now. I'm going to swim on down here, collect that jiggy, and move on. Friendly reminder to do your best and kind of keep in mind where the nearest ladder is at all times, if you can help it. It is certainly not a very good feeling to look at your air bar and go, oh, I'm about to drown, and then, then start looking for a ladder and realize the nearest one is, you know, a quarter mile down there. That ladder right there is probably the one I actually just have memorized. Uh, there's just a few different reasons in this corner of the map that you go plop it into the water. So that one I just kind of, I just know by heart. I'm going to grab some gold feathers here and miss that one because I was, I was kind of tunnel visioning on that floating honeycomb. I've never seen that before. Coming over the top of this warehouse again, I'm going to carefully dodge that window that we opened up. It would not be, I mean, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but do not want to fall back into that. I was so scared of falling there, by the way. Coming over here to this glowing lake of... God only knows what. Very, very carefully hop onto the barrels. Because I don't think you would want to touch that stuff, man. We'll be grabbing the green Jinjo. I was too busy talking about Snacker to really point out that we picked up the yellow Jinjo in his cage. So if you hopped ahead and you're looking for that yellow Jinjo, he was back there. I'm going to wrap around the crane here. We will be going up there in a second, but just real quick, I'm going to be crossing over here to where these blue shipping containers are. The blue Jinjo is going to be in one of those. The only container that we're interested in this time is actually going to be the center one that you drop down into from the top. The other two containers do have music notes and other collectibles, but this being, you know, just the Jiggy Guide, 
we're just going to be dipping into this one this time. All right, now that we're inside the container, we're going to be sort of using our ears and listening for the blue Jinjo. He's going to be tucked away in the corner over here, probably hiding from those sailor guys. I don't really blame him. I would not want to run into those guys while walking down some dark alley <laughs> or walking inside a shipping container. Anyway, coming back the way we came, we'll be climbing up the crane here and hopping onto the rusty bucket for the first time. Nice. Try not getting blown up. Pro tip from Haskey, try not getting blown up. I remember thinking to myself that there's no way that that guy was going to see me. I'm not really sure why I thought that. Anyway, flipping this switch here. I'm going to start a timer that's going to raise that cage on the deck of the, sh the main ship in the center of the level. Gives you a few seconds to climb up and run across. Um, there's probably not a very graceful way of doing this. I usually just, you know, throw myself down and a lot of times, most times I'll, I'll take fall damage actually. It looks like we avoided that that time. But uh, yeah, just make sure you get down there before the timer runs out, obviously. But also don't, don't stress about like getting out from underneath the cage. It's not like it's gonna close on you and trap you. So no stress there. Coming up here, we're going to be inputting uh, kind of a secret passcode kind of thing. This is a six-digit password, 312111. Um, I just know that. It, it's it's the same every time. You, you can memorize it. Um, the way you would figure that out naturally or organically, if you will, there's actually going to be a uh, like a plaque or a sign uh, elsewhere on the ship that will actually have that sequence on it. And I'll make sure to point that out when we get down there just so you know how you were supposed to figure that out. Kind of taking a glance at that breakable window. I've, I've talked about those those breakable windows a couple times in the other uh, walkthroughs on my channel. And I usually, dis I usually uh, describe them being different in that they have a thickness to them. So that was kind of showing off how it had some, uh, some <laughs> girth to it, if you will. Anyway, that was the captain's quarters there. He has that breakable wall inside his bedroom, and he's got a jiggy stashed away. We'll be stealing that from him. He doesn't need it. Cute little trick there, hopping up on top of that like it's like an emergency boat. It's got those arms that you can hop up on. It's really nothing that special. Just kind of saves you a few seconds. I would never try to convince anyone that I'm a speedrunner at this game. But that has a little shortcut that I know. Climbing up here, we're going to be going up these big old smokestacks, or whatever they're called. Going all the way over here to, I think this will be the front one, if you were looking at the boat. From the side, you, you could see which side is the front of the boat, which side's the back of the boat. This is the front one, and it actually has a jiggy up here. The other one, I believe, had, what was it? I think it was a mumbo token. So if you're uh, saving up for the B form on Click Clock Wood, there you go. Dropping down here, we'll see this little life ring covering this sign here. That's that's the code I was talking about uh, a few moments ago. That's, uh, if you missed it, that was for the uh, whistles at the front of the boat. That's how you were supposed to figure that out normally. And now we're going to climb on top of this big old dang box of TNT. I feel like that's kind of dangerous, sort of just hang in there like that. It'd be a shame if it were to fall and cause a bunch of chaos or something. By the way, after you, spoiler alert, you do drop it, of course you do. Um, if you have already dropped that box of TNT, you can still make that jump. It's not like you need to land on top of the uh, box of TNT to climb up that rope. You can just jump right to the, the rope and climb up that, whether or not the box is there. Now we're going to be coming over here to where the orange Jinjo is. For some reason, I really hate this corner of the map. I don't really know what it is. Those those green Choppa guys, I've, I've killed a million of them. And yet, for some reason, I always seem to get knocked off by them here. I'm not really sure what it is. Maybe it's just the pressure of... Because you, you have to swim a pretty long way to find a ladder from this spot. Maybe it's just nerves or something. I have no idea. So yeah, be careful there. That's all to say. Be careful there. Don't fall off. It sucks. I would know. Carefully coming back over here. On that nasty sort of S-curvy bridge. We're going to climb back up onto the crane. This is the other crane. This is a different crane from before. And we're going to hit the down arrow and drop that box of TNT. And open up that big old hatch, which will lead to a boss fight. 
This is like my favorite part of this level is just being able to just jump off of this. Just go right into the zone. Boss boom boxes hold. Boss boom box. That's a pretty awesome name. Uh, I, I, ironically, he doesn't actually explode, so I don't really get. I don't know if there's a joke in there that I'm missing, but you'd, you'd figure a guy named Boss Boombox would probably go boom. Uh, so anyway, this is a pretty sloppy fight for me here. For some reason, I decided I was just going to try to roll, uh, and that's how I was just going to do all the damage I needed to kill these. These guys clearly they they split whenever you kill them. Um, I usually use the Beak Barrage. That's the one where you jump and press B in the air, and Kazooie uh, pecks at him. I, I pretty much use that attack for everything in this game, honestly. And uh, just this time, for whatever reason, I decided I was going to roll, and I took a bunch of damage. I I'm pretty sure it would have gone better if I had just used my normal, my go-to attack. But who knows. Anyway, just uh, go in there and attack a whole bunch, and just keep on attacking and until everything stops moving. So that was uh, Jiggy number eight already. And you know what that means. The last two Jiggies are related to the engine room. So it's the moment we've all been waiting for. First step to this is going to be coming to the rear of the boat and hopping down these uh, little, I almost called them manholes. I still have not looked up what those things are actually called. They're like air vents. But you'll go ahead and hop down here and this is some sort of like side part of the engine room. And there's a switch there that slows down the those those impellers, those fans. And now we get to take a deep breath and go in there and try not to get knocked off. So if you're new to Banjo Kazooie, you may not even really know what I'm talking about here. Uh, this up and coming room is going to be a room where if you fall, you are killed immediately. And oddly enough, Banjo Kazooie just doesn't really have a whole lot of that in this game. Um, there's just it's pretty forgiving when it comes to you know falling off of platforms or whatever you know at, at most there might be some piranha water or you know ice water down there that'll chunk you for some health but uh it's it's pretty rare that you just fall and immediately die anyway though coming down here uh, i felt like i was a little bit low on health and i wanted to get the health from this uh beehive here but i knew i was going to be racing through that area so i used all my gold feathers to uh clear out those bees and as i was sitting there using those gold feathers i was like hmm I wonder if you can use gold feathers to get through the uh, propellers that are coming up here. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to go into too much detail about it now. I, I'd like to talk about it at the very end of the video. Uh, but just kind of ignore the fact that I use gold feathers right here. Uh, I just, for whatever reason, I decided I was going to do an experiment right in the middle of this video. And I ended up not getting uh, a whole lot of uh, information out of it. Uh, long story short, uh, to summarize, I, I really don't recommend it. But anyway, getting past that, yes, there's the ninth jiggy. Uh, the first one in the engine room, well, this is the only one in the engine room. But that's, of course, in the center, in the rear. But there is still more to do here. We got these two switches on the left and right side. Uh, the first one we're going to switch really doesn't seem to do anything. We get a little cutscene here where it shows the uh, propellers on the back of the rusty bucket slowing down. Uh, no timers yet, but once we flip the second one, yeah, we're going to get a timer and we're going to have to get out to those prope propellers and get that jiggy before those propellers turn back on. So, uh, yeah, using Kazooie to run through or jump through those propellers, I think it's probably the safest way to do that. It's just because it's the fastest uh, way to get through it. You're, you're kind of in line with the propellers for the shortest period of time. So that's kind of how I did that. And now with the second switch flipped, you can see the timer appear on screen there. And you can kind of argue that I may have switched that, I, had, I, I hit that switch kind of at the wrong time, because both times as I approach these these rotating platforms, I had to wait a cycle. Um, so I, I guess that could have been done better, but I think it's kind of nice that that happened, because you can kind of see that the timing isn't as crazy tight as you might believe. Um, if you have to sit there and wait for it to spin once or twice, go ahead and do that. Um, you'll see that after all of that, I'll still have you know maybe 10 seconds when I am, when all is said and done with, with this Jiggy here. I think uh, just the only thing to really keep in mind is to, well, of course, be careful, don't die. I mean, if, if you have to go back and you have to flip the switch again, I mean, just do it. Um, but uh, the only other thing is to use uh, Kazooie's Talent Rod ability. She moves so much faster that uh, 
you'll be able to get over there just that much sooner. And when we're underwater, also make sure to press the R trigger. Pull the R trigger because you can turn sharper. Anyway, that's how we get the engine room jiggies on Rusty Bucket Bay. Man, that last section goes so quickly. There, I feel like there was a lot more I wanted to say, but here we are at the end of the video. Um, I hope that that example is good enough that when you go to do it yourself, you'll kind of have an image in your head of what it's supposed to look like. Uh, real quick, before we go, here's just a little clip of me sort of throwing my body at the, the propellers here using gold feathers just to kind of see how it behaves, because like I said, this is something that just didn't really occur to me until now. Um, and the conclusion that I came to was that, uh, yeah, whenever you get hit by the propellers, you sort of get thrown back in a random direction. And I feel like it would probably be pretty easy to get thrown right off the map doing that. So I think going forward, I'm going to continue to use the Talon Trot ability and just put faith into my own timing. I, I still think that that's the best way to do that. If you disagree, by all means, if you think that that's the only way you're going to be able to get through is by using gold feathers, you should definitely do that. But I know the Talon Trot, for me, historically has worked, so I'm going to continue to use it. Anyway, that's going to do it for our Jiggy Guide on Rusty Bucket Bay. Thank you so much for watching. Coming up next will be Click Lock Wood, which of course will be the final part of our Jiggy Guide on Banjo-Kazooie. I hope you stay tuned for it, and I will see you in the next video.